Welcome to Heart Mindify. Before we start the show, just a reminder to share, rate, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you're listening to it. And please give us a five star rating. It helps us beat the big tech algorithms. I'm John Izzy. Change can be difficult for a lot of us, but when we understand what makes us tick, we develop a better understanding of who we are and begin a journey of discovering our best self. Join me for a free session at johnizzy.com. And I'm Kim Cordy, creator of the Emotion Chef Framework, an emotion management tool. Thoughts drive emotions and emotions drive thoughts, but it's our emotions that drive our decisions and behaviors. Find out more at kimcordy.com. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Knowing each other personally and socially for the past 10 years, Kim and John have joined forces, bringing years of experience and training providing a platform for growth and personal development, along with a little humor. John is the heart, Kim is the mind, and together they are Heart Mindified. Hello, Kim. How are you? I'm great, John. We got rain. California Did you really? need rain. Yes, we had a whole day. So, so far this year, we've had two days that included rain. And for us, that's a big deal. Wow. We have had rain for consistently for the past three weeks. Although this week it's been very windy and very cold, but it's supposed to warm up over the weekend. So I will be able to get some riding time in, which is nice. That's always good. good Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll get over our drought. Yes. Yes. So I have a situation that I wanted to bring up to you and get your feedback on. You know, and some of our listeners know that I work with abused kids, but I also worked with abused adults. One of the things that I'm finding out lately is the amount of guilt, right? The amount of guilt that the children are expressing and the amount of guilt that the adults are expressing to the point where in their everyday speech, guilt is used as much as let's say that a person would say, I'm sorry for something I have no control over. Um, Or it's minor or it's minor, right? It's like they're getting into this habit and I don't know if it stems from the abuse. It could it's becoming something I'm noticing a lot more of in communicating with young kids and communicating with adults. I'm trying to get your take on that. I'm the right person to get a take on that. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> I, I actually wrote an entire article about guilt. And it's, are you guilty of too much guilt? Because I, it happens all the time. My sister is always feeling guilty about everything. My my neighbor, I was doing nice things for her. She's in her 80s. It's COVID, for goodness sake. So if I had extra food, I make potato salad. I mean, right. here, would you like some potato salad? She loves my potato salad. Everybody loves my potato salad. Or I, you know, made some, I don't know, whatever it was. I had an apple crisp I brought that over to her. And she goes, oh, I feel so guilty. I'm like, "Uh, do I need to call the police? Did you commit a crime? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) And and I'm like, so what are you guilty of? What did you do wrong? And she goes, well, I guess nothing. I'm like, that's right. What you really need to be is appreciative. Right, thankful. And thankful. (laughs) And then if you want to reciprocate, feel free. And if you don't reciprocate, that's fine too. It's just that she felt guilty because I was bringing her food and she wasn't doing anything for me. And that's, in my book, a misapplication of guilt. Yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think we run into that problem all the time. And I hear it all the time. I can remember 
somebody going into the store, we were, I was with a group of people and somebody went in the store and said, oh, can you bring me a thing of cheese popcorn? And they said, sure. Well, they came out with caramel popcorn. And it was like, oh, my God, I feel so guilty that I got you the wrong thing. I'm so sorry. It was your money. I feel horrible. And I looked at him and I said, really? You actually feel horrible? Like, that's a real big problem for you right now? Like, I'm just take it back in and tell him you want caramel instead of the cheese and get the right one. Oh, yeah, I guess I could do that. Okay, great. I mean, it was just, it was like, it's all so much a matter of fact that people don't even realize that they feel guilty for things that they absolutely have no control over. Exactly. So this is why I created the Emotion Chef to begin with, is because of the subtle nuances that we bring to our brain when we use these words. When you think of the word guilt, you think of a courtroom, you think of a judge, you think of a sentence, uh, you know, or a fine. I mean, that's what comes into my head. You are guilty. Judge, gavel goes down. And our brain captures this too. Because remember, our brains don't have a sense of humor. They don't, it just gets data. It gets information, takes it in, and then responds accordingly with our emotions. So the emotion of guilt can be quite detrimental to us when we feel guilty over something that we didn't do. So if you look at the dictionary, by definition, guilt is the fact of having committed a specified or implied offense or crime. But in psychology, the term guilt refers to an emotion where an individual feels responsible for some action or inaction that is perceived as having negative results. It makes you self-critical, guilt does. It, it can make you have difficulty in thinking clearly. It can create stressful resentments or self-punishing behavior, all because we are applying guilt so liberally and maybe even out of habit. Maybe our parents always said, oh, I feel guilty or you're guilty of not cleaning your room enough. So that is a big deal, right? When you think about it, because our brain is saying, hmm, you're guilty, gavel down, and yet it's perceived. It might not even be true. Right? We are creatures of habit by nature, and we tend to repeat behaviors over and over again because it's what we know. It's what we do without thinking. But when we are told over and over again we should feel guilty, like you were saying, then that behavior is reinforced even if it's not true. So what do we do if we find ourselves consistently feeling guilty over everything? We take a break and ask ourselves the question, why? Why am I repeating the same behavior over and over again? Why do I choose the same words to describe my feelings? Are they appropriate? First of all, give yourself a break. We all make mistakes. But every mistake we make does not carry the same weight. It's important to understand that severity of the mistake and find the appropriate response. Words to describe your feelings are critical in understanding what it is that you are experiencing. It's not always the same. So take a step back and relax and think through your actions and the words you choose to describe them. Some of them may be appropriate. <laughs> For example, our governor came out the other day with a new COVID restriction for the state. And then he was caught the following weekend at a football game without a mask. He felt extreme guilt. And yet that was the appropriate response. How about Governor Newsom? Yes, Newsom at the restaurant. Coming out and apologizing was an appropriate response to his action. The point is to recognize the behavior and apply the appropriate level of response. And going back to nuances of, of words and why it's so important, just because you feel badly about something, let's say you have to 
discipline uh, an employee or you have to let an employee go. You can feel badly, but that course of action was the right course of action because they obviously were a detriment to the organization. Or you have to give, you're a teacher, you have to give a kid a bad grade because their performance is so low and they're not putting forth the effort. That's the thing that you have to do but it shouldn't make you feel guilty because sometimes those actions are the right actions. You may, they may not feel good doing it. So you can feel badly having to have done that, but it doesn't make you guilty. See the difference? That's a huge difference. Yeah. Huge difference. You know, excessive guilt can and often does show itself with different forms of mental illness. So those would be depression or post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, right? People that have a mental condition based on this excessive guilt that they have. That's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is everyday behaviors that we all go through. There's also a concept of survivor's guilt, right? That happens when you are a lone survivor of, say, you were in an accident, a car accident, everybody in the car passed away but you. There is that sense of survivor's guilt, right? Oh, I feel so guilty, it should have been me. Or if a member of the family commits suicide and there is a survivor's guilt there too, I didn't do enough. I should have been more. I should have done this. I should have done that. So you do find a sense of guilt in those situations that become a problem when that becomes long term, right? I think it's very normal, you know, for a f family member when a child, let's say, commits suicide, it's very normal to feel guilty. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's when those behaviors extend for a long period of time is when there might be a psychological issue there that needs to be addressed because you're not getting over, right? There's something going on beyond the sense of guilt. So, so we're talking about a very basic, a very basic look at guilt, you know, things that we say, terminology that we use, those kinds of things, I think we need to be aware of what we're saying so that we can get in tune with how we really feel as opposed to, you know, the first thought that comes to our mind. Yeah. And do the zoom out, change your zoom. Yeah. I like that. Because when you zoom out, you're looking at the overall situation, right? You're not right. just looking very focused on the one situation at hand, i.e. how awful to lose someone that you love to suicide. And when you zoom out, you might see you did try to help them, or it was impossible for you to see how deep the issues were because A, you're not trained or B, they didn't display it. And so you, important. you have to pull it back so that you can see it in its perspective. But if you still continue to feel guilty to help you relieve this emotion, you apologize or you take action to compensate for that guilt. So if there was a situation where you couldn't let go of guilty feelings, i.e. in the case of this person who lost someone close to them, then do some volunteering, learn more about the, the signs of people who are in distress, who are in a situation where they are showing everyone around them that they are in danger and everyone around them can't see it because they don't know. So if you learn and educate other people or do hotline help, then that could turn around that internal guilt and do something positive to others so that you can compensate to yourself internally for that. And that's the whole idea of letting guilt go because it's a negative emotion. And as you said, it can lead to other negative consequences that are not productive in life. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing, when you said that, the other thing that came to mind was, and you can help by alleviating guilt in other people by making them more aware, right? Because mm -hmm. I think by our actions and how we 
respond to certain situations in our life, when other people see us responding in a way that's healthy, it makes them stop to think about the way that they respond to certain situations and to choose a more healthy approach to a feeling or a situation um, or even guilt. So yeah. I think, you know, that observation, and we talk a lot about that, and it's so important because you know, think about the things that you see in your daily life and go to the grocery store. You see a kid taking a temper tantrum because they can't have the cereal they want. Or you go into, you know, the gas station, you know, the adult there is frustrated because how much they're charging for gas. I mean, we, we observe people's behavior all the time and it's really easy to say that child's a brat and that guy is a, you know, is a jerk. He should have gotten an electric car. But it's really difficult for us to look at our own behavior and say, wait a minute, I'm the jerk here, <laughs> right? And it's my son that's acting up. Um, that's really difficult for us to do. So, you know, it's really easy to to watch the movie of other people's. It's a little bit more difficult to watch your own movie. No, it totally is. But it's by repeating that process of, I feel this emotion of guilt observing what are the circumstances because in the emotion chef we i teach people that your body re receives or your brain rather receives signals from the body and it has to do something with those signals it has it has these concepts in the brain there are all kinds of concepts emotion concepts non-emotion concepts and it takes that data and it says well what am i going to do with it and and if our recipes in our head say guilt, like this this situation historically, or the closest I can get to it is guilt, then you produce that emotion automatically. When you stop and say, what's going on? No, I just feel badly. I'm not guilty. And the brain will say after a while, okay, I'm not going to feel guilty. I'm going to feel badly, or I'm going to feel whatever is appropriate. And you start building that that response in your brain because neurons that wire together fire together. Yes. Yes. And so the response will change. And I think as a byproduct of that, your sense of control and self-confidence will grow because who feels very confident in themselves if they're always guilty of something? Yeah. I can't think of one person. Mm -mm. Not one. So it, yeah. it, it can help you grow your confidence, not only in your responses, but also in who you are as a person. Yeah. And you know, the other thing to dovetail off of that, give yourself a break. You know, we all, all of us go through stuff and all of us have issues that are going on and look at today's environment. You've got Republicans fighting with Democrats, you've got racial tension, you have COVID issues, you have governors that say that it's not a big deal. You have governors that are saying it's a big deal. You yourself are saying it's a big deal. Your friends are saying it's not a big deal. We go through stuff all the time. It doesn't mean we have to take ourselves seriously all the time either, right? Yeah. So I didn't get the, you know, caramel popcorn. I got the cheese popcorn. Do you like caramel? Yeah. All right. Then eat the caramel. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm not going to, I'm not going to feel guilty or spend a huge amount of emotion, emotional drain on something that's trivial, right? Something that really doesn't really matter. And, and, you know, when we go through the day to day of our life, you know, look at the battles that you're fighting. Are they worth the battle or is it something that really doesn't have that big of an impact on you? And so learn to let it go. And to size it. Yeah. Size yeah. matters, right? So yeah. there's a much, much big difference in having a gigantic car accident where you were on the phone and caused in an accident that caused injury to others. That's a guilty moment versus yep. getting the wrong chip. It's size it. Is it a big mistake? A little mistake? Was it? careless? Was it just thoughtful, thoughtlessness, you know, factor in humanity. It, we're humans. And I 
don't think we've got anybody perfect walking this earth right now. So uh, you have to throw that factor in too. I can't get over the fact that you said size matters. Uh, you totally just what? threw me completely off guard. Um. <laughs> oh, John, don't you think it's funny though? That's hilarious. Okay. Um, but the point is, is that measuring the scale of something is important because it leads to the appropriate response as opposed to a response that is much larger than what it should be or, or even smaller than what, than what it is. I mean, and you, you could think that you did nothing wrong and yet, you know, it was huge. So there's some people that just can't even see the fact that they did something that guilt is the appropriate response. Um, so well, that's a whole nother subject, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit more than willful blindness. It's like complete blindness. Or right. narcissistic personality yeah. disorder. That's it. That's it. The key to this is just in summary, is your emotional responses matter. The words you choose to label your feelings matter. Yep. If you find yourself feeling guilty, stop and ask yourself. Zoom out of the situation and look, like, are you guilty? Think about a crime or offense. Think about the other definition, which is perceiving that something, either your action or inaction, you're perceiving that it has negative results. It might be negative for a good reason. Like I had said, sometimes you feel bad after doing or saying something, but it was for a good reason. So look at the whole situation and say, do I really feel guilty here? If you feel guilty still do something, either apologize, take some sort of action to right the wrong and let it go. Keeping a hold of it, it can lead to your self-critical thoughts. It can make it difficult for you to think clearly resentments, self-punishing behaviors, because someone's got to get punished, right? So you're going to punish yourself if you can't relieve yourself of this guilt. Let it go. That's the key to a lot of negative emotions is recognizing it, doing the proper, like in the moment analysis, zoom out, come back and say, yay or nay, and take appropriate action. Honestly, that's, that's the best way to do it. And that applies to guilt. Yeah, I agree with you. And I just want to say one thing. It's when you say, let it go, or when I say, let it go, we're not saying forget about it and just let it go. We're saying do things or put things in place so that you have the ability to let it go, right? Mm -hmm. So the self-reflection, doing something about it, studying about it, understanding, maybe getting involved. Um, when we were talking about suicide earlier, we said, get involved with the suicide hotline. Um, learn about suicide and how it affects the family. Then you'll have the ability to let it go, right? It's it's doing things or putting yourself involved in something so that you can recognize what the emotion is, understand what you're doing and how you're responding. And then and only then can you truly let it go. You can't let go of something you don't understand. Right. And if you want to learn a little bit more about how to do that and how to recognize emotions, because for a lot of people, it's even hard to recognize emotions. You should check out the emotion chef. Absolutely. This is what I'm all about. You know, emotions are our physical reaction and feelings are the labels we put on them. So we can have a, a physical reaction without a label and the brain's still going to want to do something with it. It's it's looking for something to do, and we might not be able to recognize it. So learning how to recognize your emotions and pivot from them, that's what creates uh, emotional agility and resilience. Kim, I think that's a perfect way to end today's podcast. So thank you, listeners, for joining us. And again, it's always great to talk with you, Kim. So thank you. You too, John. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Goodbye.
new shows are available every Saturday right here on heartmindify.podbean.com or wherever you listen. Kim and I would like to thank each and every one of you for allowing us to be a small part of your life. Be kind to yourself and remember, our hearts tell the story, but our mind is the conductor.